have a very special guest, Deepika Palikal Karthik. She's here joining us today, a powerhouse in sports, a woman who, against all odds, has made our country super proud. And we are very happy to host her here, along with Karthik Reddy, who you all know is a sports sports enthusiast, always trying to compare and draw parallels between sports and entrepreneurship. Deepika, if I can just request you to join us along with Karthik. So uh, whether it's the field or the boardroom, what they're here to prove is that determination, grit, perseverance, and a sprinkle of fun can lead to extraordinary outcomes. Over to you, Karthik. Thanks again, Deepika, for making the effort. Uh, first thing I discovered about Deepika is we have fellow, fellow Chennai people. Uh, so there's always special bonding between fellow Chennai folks. Um, so I think, you know, my favorite starting point to know a person, and I want the audience to know you, is where did it all start? Like, what's the inspiration to pick up a squash racket? Uh, how did this journey begin? Um, I. I don't know if many people know this, but um, I've born, I'm born into a sports family. My mom actually played cricket for the country. She captained um, the Indian cricket team in her days. Uh, my granddad played basketball for the country, and my grandmom was an athlete. The list goes on, but I'll stop there. So it was very, uh, there was no pressure. I think it was just a responsibility for me to take up a sport and play it. Um, but having said that, I think, uh, I'm the youngest of three girls, and we're seven granddaughters, and the only thing my grandparents wanted for us to, was to play sport. And I'm the only one who's actually gone into that, uh, to the career of sports. So um, that's how I started. I think it was just organically into the family, yes. So you're the favorite granddaughter on that side? I would like to believe so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, um, you know, so what, uh, you know, prompts someone to like keep pushing yourself to first rise to the national level and then turn pro, go international. I think, you know, we specifically of the choices our friends offered, the folks who know you, uh, we, we wanted Deepika on stage because it's unusual to see uh, a, a woman squash player at the world stage from India. And a little bit about that journey on uh, what drives that determination at such a young age to think that big. I know, I know everybody puts in work as a young sports person. Um, yeah, I think I'll give full credit to my parents. Uh, when I started playing, I was about 10 years old and all I wanted to do was play squash. Um, I didn't want to go to school, I didn't want to go out with friends, I didn't want to go do anything else other than play squash. And they actually gave me the opportunity to do that. Uh, but having said that, squash is a very unknown sport in the country and this is what, 25 years, uh, Back when no one really knew about squash, we didn't have a um, we didn't have an academy, we didn't have infrastructure, we didn't have coaches. So I think the the reason why I'm here today and what what I am today with all the experiences that I have, I think I have to really thank my parents because at a very young age, it was I think for them to instill in me that it's not about um, it's not about winning a national championship or it's not about winning. Uh, being India number one. It was always a bigger goal of being world number one, of winning medals for the country. So I grew up like that, with that goal of, you know, trying to, having a bigger goal of not just a national championship, because I know at, at this day and age, a lot of parents, I think the goal stops at being national champion, and then we'll see what happens. So um, I think for that, I have my parents to thank. But uh, being a part of squash as well, I think it was a very unknown territory for us because we didn't, uh, I didn't have any um, role models to look up to in the country, as I can say. And my parents had to find uh, places, my parents had to find coaches, my parents had to find academies. And at the very young age of what, 12 or 13, I think I moved based to Egypt and I stayed there. And I had, um, I did all my homework from Egypt my mom would go back every three weeks, take my homework in, in a big uh, you know, bundle of things, go back home, and then I, she would bring back notes for me to study. So I think my journey has always, obviously been very hard compared to a lot of other uh, sports in India, but I'm very, very happy that you know, doors have opened up for squash players, not just because of me. I'm sure that there are two, three other people who have done extremely well for the country, but we're very, just, we're very happy that we've put Indian, uh, Indian squash on the sports map in the country. If you heard a little bit about the panels as you walked in today, 
and I told you the theme for this year's edition has been, it's our 13th year, so we're also growing up. And when you look at our founders and our, our patterns, each of them starts building a little bit more courage incrementally every year. And finally, we have a lot of champions across the world. Uh, and the point you made to become a role model is how, you know, that starting point is super tough. And the first companies you saw two on stage, they've been building since 2010, straight out of college. So it seems very similar in terms of journeys. Um, you spoke about coach, coaches and infrastructure. Uh, specifically, other than your parents, did anyone play an important role? How important is it when you have to slog for like 10 years at a stretch with a single-minded goal? Which is kind of very similar. That's why we equate entrepreneurial journeys with sports people. Mm. And, and competition is not trivial anymore. If you're sitting in India, an Amazon will come here. If you go abroad, you're competing with 100 people. So in, I, I'm trying to understand for the, you know, to try and see if there's a parallel between your mindset of how you build in, against a global player. Um, and did, was the coaching that helped beyond your own grit, what all helped actually? Um, I think over the years, my journey can be split into different uh, parts of, you know, the years where I was a junior. Um, I think I, I was very lucky uh, to have got success, success at a very young age because I've, I was already world number one in the junior category when I was 14, 15 years old. And then it was a decision for me to move up the ladders and take that hard decision of whether I still wanted to play juniors and still kept winning because the competition was quite comfortable for me or try to go out of my comfort zone and start playing the senior category. And then at 16 years old to do that, I think I needed a lot of backing from my parents as well as my coaches. And the reason why I broke into the top 10 in the world when I was only 20 was because I started uh, yeah, the, the professional uh, circuit at a very young age. But I feel the important thing for me, and I keep you know, telling the juniors is this, is that it's very important to put yourself in very uncomfortable situations, to learn from it. Uh, to believe it or not, when I, was, when I joined the professional circuit when I was 15, 16, I did not win a match for three years. And I was like, I'm gonna hang my racket up, I don't wanna be a part of this sport, what am I doing? But then I feel like those three years, I learned so much than what I've not learned in my junior career to just be standing um, with the best of the world. I was playing world number ones on a daily basis. I was playing top 20 people. And I think it made it easier when I was an actual senior to migrate into the category. So I think what I've learned is as, as an athlete, I think it's very important to get out of your comfort zone, um, get yourself a bit uncomfortable and learn from those situations. And, and so is it, uh, and now if you just cut to where India is at today, the big question is such a large country and you, you've, you've shown that it was so difficult and challenging to move to Egypt to actually get the infrastructure and the coaching. Uh, do you think things have changed? Do, do we foresee 100 medals in Asia that is great? Uh, I know you're still playing, you're still winning gold medals. Um, but is, have you seen that in the 20 years have you become a trendsetter in squash for women? Um, and what has changed in those 20 years? And what should we be doing as a country to see ourselves as a sporting superpower? So Indian sport has definitely changed. Um, I think we're growing leaps and bounds, I mean. But I feel, you know, as an athlete, you're, you know, you're seeing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. And, you know, you're, I was at the Asian Games about six months back in, in China. And India is doing really well. I think this is the, this is the best year for us in, in terms of medal tally. But you're sitting there as an athlete, and I think I've just made, I just won the quarterfinals and ma made it to the, uh, to the semis. And all the headlines are, Deepika Palikal assures a bronze. But the headlines should be Deepika Palikal fighting for a gold. So I think that needs to change in the country. I feel where. I think we're very content with medal. It doesn't matter what color it is, but as an athlete, you're, the only thing you're dreaming about, sleeping about, eating about is that gold medal. So I think that needs to change of trying to, trying to aim higher and trying to aim for the best regardless of, you know, of, of what backing you've got, or, you know, the government backing, the sponsor backing. I think it's very important to try and aim for the best and try and achieve that. Uh, super stuff. No, and then uh, maybe uh, any fun incidents you can recall of 
how difficult it is for a sports person, especially in an individual sport, uh, to battle these like you know situations where yes, you have coaches, you have interests, but the loss is yours, the challenges are yours. You're running all over the world, um, and sometimes our founders find it daunting that uh, they have to go and win these markets globally. And you know we have a joke internally now that. There's no way to win unless you displace yourself and go and contend with that. You said put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Any fun stories from you know uh, gritty stories or emotional stories from uh, you know from those many many years of being overseas? No, I see. I feel uh, being an athlete in India is hard. Being a women athlete in India is harder. So um, I think there are obviously a lot of experiences and you know a lot of. Uh, stories but I think what is really stuck with me and I don't know if it's a funny story but I feel like it's probably something very close to my heart that um, I've always been someone like who's headstrong I've always trained with boys I've I've made boys cry on court because I've always beaten them so I take that on myself like I've been always around the guys um, I think what really I'm proud of sitting here today I might retire in a few months but I think what really stuck with me is how I've, uh, I've tried to change um, the equality in sport, in, in squash at least. Um, I think when I was, uh, this was about eight years back, nine years back when we were playing the national championships, I think um, I realized that uh, the equal pay, yeah, it, wasn't it, it wasn't happening. And I've never, you know, when you enter these tournaments, the last thing you think about is, you know, the check that you're getting at the end. You only think about, you know, your national champion and that's all that matters. But for some reason, I was filling up the form as usual and just, you know, putting my entry in. And then I, I had to sign at the end and I saw the, I saw the prize money. And the prize money said two and a half, three lakhs for the men. And it said some 20 or 30,000 for the women. So I still signed it, I sent it, and then I think it just kept going on in my head. I, did I read the numbers wrong? I'm very bad at math, I'm very bad at numbers. So I was like, okay, something must be wrong. Then I was just sitting with, uh, with Saurav, who is India numbers one, who's my doubles partner, happens to be my brother-in-law also. Um, I was like, Saurav, you know, you guys get way more money than, than us. And he's like, yeah. So there was no like, oh, really? He's like, yeah. So I felt like, you know, I've trained with the I've trained with with the boys all my life because I've always wanted to put myself in a you know in a higher situation where you know I'm playing tougher people, and then it just struck me that why are they getting paid or you know it's not it's not even about money. I feel it's just about respect. I think uh, I put in the same amount of hours and uh, on court and off court just like the men. So why am I not getting that equality and? I stood my ground. I didn't play a national. Cha I didn't play a few national championships. Uh, I got threatened uh, that I won't be uh, taken into the Indian team because the national championship is one of the selection processes. I said it's fine. Um, I think that was a big decision for me um, emotionally. Um, I think a lot of people also supported me through that, and I think today we stand as equal prize money for the last five years. So I'm very proud of that. No, outstanding. No, I knew that was a part of your story, but I'm glad it came out this way without me asking it as an obvious <laughs> question. So thanks for sharing very candidly. Um, and, and so married to a cricketer now, so assured sports kids coming out of, your, out of that stable? Or? Yeah, you, have two get, now? you have two now? How old? I have twins, yes. Uh, okay. Twin boys, they're about two years old. Um, actually, one likes to play cricket, one likes to play squash. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Um, I think it's a decision we will take, but um, right now I think uh, the family is moving towards cricket. Okay. So um, I'll try days. and play Early my days. charm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, and and the um, the other question I had is how uh, I mean people always laud women who go through uh, so many more personal changes as they become mothers, they become parents, um, and yet out of the blue you. I don't know if people expected you to come back, but you're here, you're winning gold medals again. How was that journey? I mean, just to inspire the women in this crowd as well. It's been hard. It's been, um, I think it's been fulfilling. I think, uh, you know, when I took the break at 28, I was probably top 15 in the world and I was playing my best squash and um, I was enjoying traveling around the world and doing my thing. 
but suddenly, I think just one day something clicked and I wasn't enjoying being on tour, being away from family, uh, and I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Uh, so I, I decided that I was just gonna take a break. It, it was a mutual decision with my husband and myself that you know we wanted to start a family. But uh, having said that, uh, it, for me to have taken that step of uh, taking that break at a, at a young age of 28, playing my best, I think I was very lucky to have had the support from a lot of people, including my parents and coaches. Uh, coming back, it was always on the cards, but I didn't think it would have been this hard. I've seen people bounce back, win gold medals, win Wimbledon, win uh, French Opens, but I, I, it, you know, you always see the stories you don't see the stories that what happened behind the doors, right? So for me, uh, I think it's, it's been really, really hard to be back, you know, be back in shape. I'm obviously, when I got back for the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games, my kids were only about seven months old. So uh, it, was, uh, it was hard for me to, to process the information that, you know, I'm, I've not played for seven months and suddenly I'm at the biggest stage at the Commonwealth Games trying to win a medal. Um, it's been hard, but it's been fulfilling, and I'm just very, very happy that, you know, the boys got to see me win a gold. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. On that note, uh, the wonderful Deepika Talakil, thanks again for flying in from Chennai. Thank and you. Being a wonderful guest today, thank you.